I said it earlier, I'll say it again now. New podcast in the description. Talked about LeVar Ball and Luke Walton. Talked about my favorite and not favorite rap albums of 2017. Now we're going to talk about DeMar DeRozan, who has always been an interesting player to me. One who I've criticized for, at times, over-dribbling, at times, not being that great of a playmaker, given how often the ball was in his hands. Sometimes being part of the problem as to why Toronto's offense would just get kind of slow at times. And the numbers backed this stuff up because a lot of the time, Kyle Lowry with bench players has been better for the Raptors than DeMar DeRozan without Kyle Lowry. But this season, seems things are flipping a little bit. The numbers like DeRozan more. And, I mean, the numbers are not always the entire thing because, I mean, Lowry was playing against bench lineups a lot of the time, whereas DeRozan would be playing against starters. And to be fair, the Raptors would still have a positive net rating with DeRozan out there. So that type of stuff is explainable. Uh, But even so, they do like him a little bit more this year. So maybe there is some, some oomph to what DeRozan's doing, providing some more positive basketball. And I think part of it is just his three-point shot, you know, where he has looked actually confident shooting three-pointers. And I think that is going to be the big question for him, mainly going into the playoffs, because teams are going to dare him to shoot from outside, you know. They're going to go under on screens. They're going to leave him open when he's sitting in the corner and Kyle Lowry is driving or... Maybe Serge Ibaka's posting up on a switch. Who knows? But they're going to dare him to uh, shoot from out there. It's just a matter of, is he going to be comfortable enough to go up with it quickly and shoot it? Is he going to second-guess himself? Is he going to shoot them, but he just can't make them? Who knows? And I think part of the reason why this is so important is because DeRozan, while he's a very talented offensive player, of course... I feel like if you have a team that has a lot of big-bodied guys and DeRozan can't get switched onto smaller players that much, I do think he can have some trouble scoring consistently, especially because he goes to the mid-range jumper so much, and if he's not able to get that shot over someone like, uh, let's just say LeBron James, if they play Cleveland in the playoffs then he can miss some of those shots. So if he's able to take a couple of those possessions away and just have some three-pointers, whether they be pull-ups in the pick-and-roll or just playing off-ball, that would be huge. I should also give some credit to his passing. Uh, DeRozan is at 24% assist percentage, which is a drastic leap from about 20% last season. And with all this happening, his turnovers have increased, but only by a little bit. So it's not that big of a deal. So he really has become more of an all-around offensive player. Um, So that is some impressive stuff for him. Now, if we can talk about the Raptors' offense, the big thing for them this season is that they were going to try to move the ball more. And to their credit, they have done that. They're still towards the bottom of the league in passes per possession and things like that, but... They're a little better, and you can see it because there are times when the ball doesn't stick in Lowry's hands too much on pick and rolls, and it's not DeRozan isolations all the time. But last night against the Nets, where DeRozan was great, I should say that. I mean, he hit a lot of tough shots, and he was pretty much the reason they won the game down the stretch. It's still not a good sign that that was the Raptors' offense late. Because sure, that sort of thing is going to work against the Nets. But if you're in the postseason and you're playing whoever they may end up facing, the Wizards, the Celtics, the Cavs, and you're facing a team who's game planning against you, are you really going to be that successful going to that well all the time, just relying on DeRozan's ability to hit tough shots? Eventually that sort of thing is going to catch up with you. And 
you would hope that the Raptors would just have more stuff to go to. Now, the very last play of the game, or not the very last, the last play of regulation. The play itself was actually pretty good. They had Lowry set a screen for DeRozan on the right corner. And if you look at the replay, DeMar actually had a lot of room if he would have cut towards the free throw line, but instead he decided to go up top towards the top of the key and it allowed his defender to get back to him. If he would have just gone to what would have been his right side, I mean, he could have got a really good shot from about, you know, 15 feet out or so. So that was a good play. It just didn't work out, I guess. Um, But that's still a good sign overall. And I should give credit to just Dwayne Casey as a whole. Like, Toronto's been good. You know, they have moved the ball more. I think he's been managing the rotations well. It's just, it's always a matter of the offense at the end for them. But I do think that DeRozan, if he's able to maintain this three-point shot, then that could be the first step towards them having a more dynamic offense late in the game, which is, of course, what they're going to need in a big playoff series. Another thing with DeMar, if I can get back to the passing, that was good. There was a game recently against Milwaukee where... You know, the Bucs do their normal trapping, pick-and-roll defense thing. And DeRozan did a good job of finding the guy, or finding the right play. Because I feel like in the past, he has had trouble with seeing what the next play should be. Because he's so used to just getting his offense, and... I mean, he's been able to make the obvious pass in his career, which is guy is open, throw guy ball. But... You know, if, if the opposing team is trapping you, then you might have to pass it to one dude who's not open, but then he can then pass it to the guys who's open and that type of stuff. And it seems like DeRozan's getting better at that. So just an overall offensive improvement for him, which is good. Uh, as for on defense, he's still pretty bad. He's not a complete disaster. Like, I don't think he's James Harden or Isaiah Thomas levels of bad, but he's still a below average defender. And I do think teams should just ISO him sometimes. Just ISO him or just put him in a simple pick and roll. And that's kind of dangerous for the Raptors because if there are times when DeRozan and Valanciunas are in the game together, yeah, you know, you could attack those two. Which is why in the playoffs, uh, Valanciunas probably won't be playing in the big moments. It'll probably be a Baca at center and then we'll see what they do with the rest of the spots. But yeah, I mean, I think having OG and an OB in there could help out. Um, when DeRozan's in there. So, you know, you could have Anobi defend, like, LeBron or something. And then Lowry could end up on Isaiah, and then DeRozan could defend, like, Kyle Korver. Which, you know, you still have to work, but it's not as difficult. You just got to get around screens and be ready to run. So, yeah, what, what I'm getting at is DeRozan's improvement on offense is definitely there. But I do think the Raptors still need to do things with their lineups in order to make up for some of his other deficiencies. But nonetheless, he's improving. The three-point shooting, the playmaking, if both of these things can maintain themselves in the postseason, then I think Toronto becomes a bit scarier. Would I pick them over the Cavs? No. But this is the sort of thing that could lead to me picking them over the Celtics, you know? Because I don't think Toronto is really that far away from Boston. I know the Celtics have a better record. They've also played way more games than the Raptors have. But, yeah. I think this, if there is a gap between this, the Celtics and the Raptors, I think DeRozan being this good definitely closes it a bit. So, yeah. Ultimately, we're just going to have to see. My gut feeling is in the playoffs, there are going to be moments when DeRozan gets a little bit exposed because he's not all the way there on his three-point shot yet. Definite improvement, but, you know, it's tough to erase. I mean, what is he? He's 28 years old, and this is his eighth NBA season. It's tough to just flip the switch like that and immediately just start chucking threes and being successful at it. So I think there's going to be some problems in the playoffs for him. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff for DeMar. Hopefully he can keep it up. And once again, podcast in the description. LeVar Ball, Luke Wallen, 
rap albums, I'm done. <laughs>